hi everyone welcome back to my channel so as you can see by today's video it is very very exciting i am now a mum so i haven't uploaded for quite a while which i do apologize about but um as you probably know um if you're a mum or you know it's a bit hard to keep up with stuff that you usually do once you have a baby but um yes he's here now and it is the most amazing thing honestly i think it's really surreal that I am actually a mum now and I have a son it's quite weird still to like think of it but um it's honestly just the most amazing thing ever and the whole experience was absolutely amazing and I cannot wait to share it with you in today's video so he was actually born um about two weeks ago now um I was meant to upload last Saturday but it all got a bit hectic which I'm sure you can understand so I am sorry if you was waiting for a video and I didn't upload but thank you so much for all of your kind comments on my Instagram post because I did announce the birth on Instagram today I'm just going to be doing my birth story and I'm going to be telling you what happened when I went into labour and the whole experience because it didn't go as planned as I thought it would but you know some things never go to plan so yeah I'm just going to share it with you guys today because I love watching people's birth stories and I thought I would share it with you so make sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and if you want to hear about my birth story then please keep watching so I thought I would just give you guys a little sneak peek he has this really cute outfit on right now it's got some angel wings on the back I'm not really showing his face yet because I just don't feel ready to yet but I thought I would show you a little sneak peek he's luckily fast asleep right now so gives me time to film this video so he is currently two weeks and three days at the moment he still looks pretty small um obviously he's a newborn yeah so i just thought i would show you quickly a little sneak peek but he is sleeping right now so i'm gonna put him back to bed and carry on with my birth story so i hope you guys enjoyed that little sneak peek of the baby so now i'm gonna be getting on with my birth story so um quite interesting i'm just gonna start from uh sort of day before i went into labor to when i come home so my last video fun fact my last video that you've actually seen on my channel which was called weekend vlog i believe where i just like went out for the day and showed you guys what i was doing i actually went into labor that evening like middle of the night so the next day after that like early hours of the morning if you get what i mean and um yeah i just went out that day as normal as you saw in the vlog i was with my dad um and then i got home that evening and i wasn't getting any like pains or anything i was getting a couple like little slight twinges and stuff in my stomach but i honestly had had them for a couple of weeks so i thought nothing of it i thought it was just like my body preparing for labor um and then I went to bed that night, obviously I was really uncomfortable because I was like 39 weeks and a couple days, like I was huge. I was 39 weeks plus one because I had him at 39 weeks plus two, fun fact. So he was, how many days early? I think five, six days early, something like that. So yeah, I went to bed normally that night and then I woke up at about, it was 3am which hour um yeah woke up about 3 a.m and i had some really bad like stomach cramps but it sort of felt like i needed to use the toilet so yeah bit tmi but i went to the toilet and after i went it still hadn't changed and i still had like quite bad stomach cramps so i thought hmm, this is a bit weird and it was just really uncomfortable it was definitely different to anything i'd had before so i was a bit like hmm i was a bit sus and i was like hmm, is something happening but i sort of ignored it because i thought no i'm always i'm just hoping something's happening because i want it to happen and it's not really happening um but then they started to get a little bit more painful it was like it was like a, just an initial constant slight ache in my stomach at first and then it would get like a pain that would come and go so i thought is this like a contraction so i went and told my mum and she was like oh don't be silly it's nothing like you'll be fine it's probably it's probably nothing if it gets worse you know like maybe call the like midwife um because it the only reason why my mum acted like that is because like i said i literally did say every single day i think i'm in labor i've got a pain so i sort of like cried wolf but then it did get worse so i decided to call um triage which is like a place you can call um to speak to like midwives to see if you need to come in um and i called them and i explained to her like my symptoms that i was getting pains that were sort of coming and going i'd also downloaded a contraction app at this time to time my contractions and they were a bit irregular but some of them were like a minute long and then it'd be like 20 seconds long and i would think i don't know because when i 
like spoke to the lady on the phone she did say you know they need to be more frequent until you can come in and I don't think you're in proper labour yet it does sound like you're in early labour so I was like yes um but it was quite painful like it was painful to the point where I couldn't get back to sleep so I knew something was like going on so she said maybe try have like a warm bath or something you know like try get some sleep maybe eat or drink something and then call us back if you feel like it gets worse so I put the phone down and then an hour later it was getting worse so I called again and she said you know I still don't think you're ready to come in sort of just the same thing she sort of said to me before she was really nice and helpful but she still didn't think I was ready and she was like maybe ring back next time and then we'll talk about like what we can do so I left it again kept time in the contractions they kept getting more frequent and I hadn't felt anything like it to be honest I knew I was in labour at that point and I was like wow this is quite scary because it is not like the pain that I imagined it to be because a lot of people said it was sort of like period cramps to me it was literally nothing like period cramps it was completely different it was one million times worse it didn't even feel like the same type of pain to be honest I never really got bad period cramps anyway I did ring back a third time and when I rang she was like okay you can come in and we'll examine you we'll see how many like if you're dilated at all which I didn't think I was going to be I thought I'd be like maybe one centimeter and then like stay like it for ages I just thought the whole thing was going to be a really slow process but I was wrong so then what happened is I got my dad to drive me to the hospital um it was about 6 a.m at this point so I'd woke up at three and then I'd been getting the contractions and then by the time it got to six sort of around six when I called them I was like you know I need to come in it really hurts so it was about six got dropped off to the hospital and then when I got there um I went into the room where you get examined and I turned out to be three centimeters dilated which I was so shocked because as you know obviously you have to be like 10 to be able to like give birth but three is a lot more than I thought I was going to be so I was like wow like that is crazy I was so excited and then I sort of talked to them and they was like you know you can go home if you want because obviously you're not you have to be four centimeters to be put onto labor ward I was actually meant to be going to the birthing unit but that day they didn't end up having any space on birthing unit so I was gonna have to go to labor ward but to be honest I was gonna go there anyway because I decided I was getting an epidural as soon as I started getting contractions which I did get an epidural and it was the best thing I've ever done in my life they was like you know you can wait a little bit or you can go home and I was like I'm just gonna wait because surely it can't be that long till I'm four centimeters um so they admitted me and I I think that's the word when you're in labor as well um I went into this like waiting area which sort of looked like a labor it was in it was in the labor ward but it wasn't actually labor ward it was just in the maternity ward sorry um and you was like waiting in the room there was like three other beds and I was on one of them and it was just some other women that were waiting to go into labor ward um and they had like a, a bed a ball you could like bounce on um but at that place you wasn't allowed any like gas and air or anything or epidural so i was in a lot of pain and the pain started to get really really bad like they were getting much more closer together and faster and i kept asking you know please can i go on to label can you examine me quicker because they like to wait like four hours between examinations to stop infection so they was like we will try and examine you as quick as we can because we know you're in a lot of pain um and honestly it was so scary like every time i was about to get a contraction i would cry and be like i can't do this and they were so lovely the midwives they really helped me and they was like you know you just have to breathe um the breathing did help a little bit but honestly it wasn't really doing anything i ended up taking some codidromol that's the first painkiller i had <laughs> of the many ones that i had i literally have never taken so many different tablets in my life it did absolutely nothing um i did wait an hour to take it because i'm a bit funny about taking tablets and i was like i don't want to feel weird and i was like it's not going to make you feel weird it's going to help with your pain and i was like i don't want to take it but then at at one point I didn't even care because it hurt too much so then they come and examined me again and I was four centimeters um quite quickly after I'd got there about two hours so they said you know you're moving quite quickly so we can put you onto labeled now because you're four centimeters and then I kid you not I got put into the labeled room and they examined me again and they said you're six centimeters so that was pretty crazy 
so I'd literally move from four to six centimeters within the space of like half an hour um I got into my room and yeah I got examined I was six centimeters they was like you're moving pretty quickly and I was like I want an epidural right now because I couldn't take it anymore and the pain was so bad the worst pain I've ever felt it is really bad like people told me it would be um but I never obviously knew what it was going to feel like until I went through it myself but yes it is disgusting it's literally the worst pain ever um so I had the epidural and um that wasn't bad at all like I felt a bit of pressure when they put it into my back but as soon as I had it it was just literally the best decision I've ever made I literally just laid back and I was so chilled out I felt so relaxed I couldn't feel anything no pain at all like so why wouldn't why wouldn't you do that like if you want to have a natural not that having an epidural is not natural but if you want to have a unmedicated birth that's completely up to you and you're literally amazing if you can do that because i couldn't i guess people's like pain thresholds are different and everything but i was glad i got the epidural that's what i'm gonna say i was having some gas and air just before the epidural while they were putting it in because i was still getting the contractions and i was six centimeters by this point so they were pretty bad um, and every time I'd get one and I'd had to sit really still because they were putting the epidural on my back So I loved the gas and air. It didn't it didn't really do anything. It just made me feel pretty Weird, um, but I loved it once I had it I was just having like my obs every now and then my observations I never have had my blood pressure checked so much like I did that day, but I think they just have to keep an eye on it um, and then I actually got examined a couple hours after and I was eight centimetres, like two hours after being sick. So they was like, you're moving very quickly, especially for your first baby. If you wasn't to have had the epidural, you would have probably had him by now. Because apparently the epidural slows the second part of labour down. Or just labour in general. I'm sorry if my angles changed a bit, but my annoying camera ran out of storage. So I had to delete some stuff. But yeah, um, so I was eight centimetres. And then I had a catheter fitted because... Um, I'm actually not sure why, but it was needed to be done, so I had a catheter fitted. It was a removable one, whatever the difference is between a removable one and a non-removable one. Um, so yeah, I think, I don't even really remember. But then I got examined within the next four hours, like you do, and I was really hoping that it hadn't slowed down, and it didn't. I was 10 centimetres, so I was so happy. The midwife that I had was a really lovely lady, and she was sort of joking around with me, and she went bad news and I was like please don't say I'm eight centimeters and she went no I'm just joking you're 10 I was like yes uh so that meant I could start pushing within the next hour because they said with like first time mums once you're 10 centimeters they don't like you to start pushing straight away they like to give your body like an hour and they only let you push for two hours and it did not feel like I was pushing for two hours but I was um to be honest it did feel very difficult, it was a very tiring thing and I just couldn't get the hang of it properly. I tried my hardest, um, I got very very tired. They did manage to see baby's head slightly but it wasn't working out properly so I had to stop um, which was kind of sad because I was just too tired. Then a couple of doctors come in and they examined me and they had realised I think the baby was actually they realised before I started pushing but what had happened is the baby had turned back to back before I started pushing but what had happened is the baby had turned back to back and apparently it's a little bit harder for them to be delivered that way so that's what had happened to me but I carried on doing it anyway I think or they thought he turned back around I don't even remember but then they come in they was like um we think you might need a bit of help so we might want to help you with forceps um and we like to do that in theater so i didn't mind that i was like okay that's all right at this point i was so exhausted i honestly did start to feel very unwell um i was very hot I, had a, I felt like i had a temperature i had the worst headache i've ever had my head was throbbing i felt sick i actually threw up while i was pushing which i now have heard is very common and then soon after that another doctor come in and he was like um, we're gonna probably do forceps but it might even be a c-section so that didn't really scare me that word because I sort of was planning on having a c-section anyway because he was breached a couple times so I was like planning in my head you know you're probably gonna end up having to have one um, but then he wasn't breached near the end of the pregnancy so I got to have a normal birth 
well I thought I was gonna and then yeah so they was like you know it's either gonna be forceps or it's gonna be a c-section but we think we'll be able to do it with the forceps and I was like okay um I'd already had the epidural obviously um but if you guys didn't know one of my biggest fears is being put to sleep with general anesthetic I have been put to sleep once in my life when I was younger for a toe surgery um for my toenail but uh is i really don't like the feeling of being out of control when the anaesthetist said that word i was literally like crying i was like please do not put me asleep i literally had a breakdown and he was like no don't worry you're not you're not gonna have to be put asleep we just have to say it because it is a precaution like if something was to go wrong and we'd had to put you asleep or if you wasn't numb enough but i had already had the epidural so he was like most likely you're gonna be fine so my mum and my boyfriend was like you know don't worry you're not gonna have to get put asleep which I didn't which I'm really thankful for but at that point I was just getting really upset and even my mum started to get upset because she could see I was in a really a lot of stress um but yeah I, they tried to calm me down and everything and then soon after that about half hour after 20 minutes I got wheeled into theatre so when I got into theatre yet again it was getting really traumatic and I, w I did have a really hard time when I look back at it it was probably one of the most stressful things that's ever happened to me and um, some people might be like you know like why are you being so over the top but um I don't know why I just was really I was terrified obviously because it's a big thing like, I've never had surgery that major before and it was scary um, and I wasn't planning on having a c-section I was planning on having a regular birth my boyfriend come in with me because he was my birth partner number one so he did get to sit next to me the whole time which made me feel a lot better um but I was really shaking and everything because the epidural does make you shake but I was also so nervous they examined me and they realized that the forceps wasn't going to be an option because the baby had gone back up too high um so they said i was gonna have to have a c-section so i was like okay i've prepared myself i was very scared but then they blew up this balloon inside of me because apparently when you have a c-section they have to like push everything up and then once i'd done that um i calmed down a little bit um, they were all really lovely the surgeons and everyone they were really like trying to calm me down and then they pulled the like curtain up in front of me and they started doing it so initially I didn't really feel that much um, but I did feel some tugging quite quite a weird sensation when they were pulling the baby out and I was like whoa that that does feel weird um, but I didn't feel any pain which was good and then literally after about five ten minutes I heard him cry <laughs> and then I cried because I couldn't believe that I had my own baby it was just so surreal and they sort of showed him to me and it's so weird like I finally got to see what he looked like after nine months of him being in my belly and it was just the most like just best thing ever it's honestly the best thing ever and then he actually had meconium which if you don't know is when they poo inside of you um, when they were doing one of my examinations, I forgot to say, um, my waters then broke. They didn't break for ages, but when they were examining me, when I was about eight centimetres, my waters broke. And when it came out, it was sort of a weird colour. And I asked, why is it like that? And they said, it's because he's done a poo inside of you, which means he had meconium. So he got a little red hat um, because they give like different types of situations, different colour hats. So the meconium babies get red hats. So they put it in his little um, thing. This was when I was in the labour room um but obviously it got brought to theatre as well so he got taken away as soon as he was born to um be examined in the same room so i didn't really get to hold him straight away and he got taken away they done some oxygen on him um obviously his dad went with him i was just still laying there um but he was fine i was like is he okay because i was so worried and they was like yeah he's fine he's just they're, they're just sucking a bit of it out of him like the the poo because it's a little bit clogged up in his chest or his lungs and then i got the most awful pain in my shoulder blades it was worse than the labor so that is the worst pain i've ever had in my life which i soon found out is called trapped wind in your shoulders and it is because they blew up the balloon inside of me it gets you trapped wind inside of your body and obviously you can't get trapped wind out of your shoulders because like where is it gonna go so apparently it's one of the worst pains so there was like it's it's okay it's normal it sometimes happens after a c-section i think they gave me fentanyl so it was quite a strong painkiller um but it really helped with the pain and yeah i had that and then about half an hour after the stitches took quite long 
um, they brought the baby over to me and um, I saw him, I gave him a little kiss and then they was like, he's going to have to go to NICU, which is the neonatal intensive care unit um, for a bit just to check on his breathing just because of the meconium, um, but don't worry, it should be fine. So that was a bit sad, but he got to go with his dad. So I felt like, okay, because he was with um, his dad, obviously. So they went there and then I finished getting stitched up and then I went into recovery and then literally about, 10 minutes after i was in recovery 20 minutes he got wheeled in in his little thing and they was like he's okay and my mom was in recovery with me as well so it was really lovely um and then my mum had to leave and then my boyfriend got to stay till 12 o'clock and then visiting hours were over um well they let him stay a little bit later because i was in recovery till after 12 o'clock because my c-section was at like nine o'clock at night so it was late anyway and then i got wheeled into the ward i was going to be staying in for a couple of days well i didn't know it was going to be a couple of days but it was um and then yeah i said bye to my boyfriend and then I had my first night with the baby on my own and um, which was very surreal so um I just kept waking up and breastfeeding him a little bit and then yeah it was honestly not that difficult like it really was quite chilled um it was very cozy I was just in like a ward and there was just like one other lady in the room like it was just really quite chill and the next morning like visiting visiting hours were like 10 so obviously his dad come straight back and he got to stay there with us the whole day which was really nice honestly the whole experience was amazing because I got to meet my baby that I'd carried for a very very long time and it was just like I imagined like I knew I was gonna cry um but it was just crazy and yeah it's been mad I hope you enjoyed hearing all of it and I hope that you liked seeing my child so that is it for today's video i will try to obviously post every saturday as much as i can um and you might even see baby boy in a couple of videos you know soon coming in the near future um so yeah it's just going to be a whole new journey on my channel and i'm really excited to share it with you guys so yeah make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because like i said i do at least try now to upload every single saturday and thanks for always being so supportive of me and i do read all your guys comments and they really do mean a lot to me they're very kind and they're very nice and obviously the comments on my instagram post as well um so thank you so much but yeah i will see you in my next video thanks so much for watching bye